I'm reading from Genesis chapter 12, verse 10 this morning. Genesis 12, verse 10. At that time, a severe famine struck the land of Canaan, forcing Abram to go down to Egypt, where he lived as a foreigner. As he was approaching the border of Egypt, Abram said to his wife, Sarai, Look, you're a very beautiful woman. When the Egyptians see you, they will say, This is his wife? Let's kill him. Then we can have her. So please tell them you're my sister. Then they will spare my life and treat me well because of their interest in you. And sure enough, when Abram arrived in Egypt, everyone spoke of Sarai's beauty. When the palace officials saw her, they sang her praises to Pharaoh, their king. And Sarai was taken into his palace. Then the Pharaoh gave Abram many gifts because of her, sheep, goats, cattle, male and female donkeys, male and female servants, and camels. But the Lord sent terrible plagues upon Pharaoh and his household because of Sarai, Abram's wife. What have you done to me, he demanded. Why didn't you tell me she was your wife? Why did you say she's my sister and allow me to take her as my wife? Now then, here is your wife. Take her and get out of here. Abram, Pharaoh, ordered some of his men to escort them, and he sent Abram out of the country along with his wife and all his possessions. I remember this one time when we were living in Stratford, Ontario, that uh, our daughter Emily had just been born just before we moved there, and this was not long after the move. Uh, I had had a very stressful day at work, and I came home distracted, million things on my mind, trying to keep track of all kinds of details. And uh, Roxanne said to me, why don't we rent a movie tonight? So kids, just so you know, Netflix did not always exist. There was this thing called Blockbuster. And uh, I left my house and drove out to the store to rent a movie. I went inside and started looking at the racks. And after a couple of minutes passed, I realized something and I ran back to the car. And yes, it was true. Our daughter, Emily, was in her car seat in the back seat of the car. Roxanne had said to me before I left the house, why don't you take Emily with you? She knew that uh, I love being with Emily, that when I'm with her, I can focus on her and all the other cares she figured would melt away because I would be holding her in my arms. And here I was in the movie store looking for movies and not realizing that I was responsible to care for her. It was like the worst parenting moment I ever had with her. Even now, when I tell you this story, uh, it, this week I, I stopped and considered, should I tell it, should I not? What are these people gonna think of me? I'm still pretty new here. And uh, are you gonna lose respect for me? It was 30 years ago, but it's still fresh. The shame of that moment when I forgot my responsibilities because my head was filled with other thoughts that I was, I was trying to come up with good plans for the, for the church I was working at and the, the day I'd had at work. And I totally forgot on the way there, I just got focused in my thoughts, totally forgot she was in the back seat and uh, went about my routine. And for those few minutes, she was in the car alone. People get upset if a dog's left in a car without the window cracked. And uh, here I had left my baby daughter. So I, I ran up to the car, I got in, I was looking around, I wanted to make sure nobody saw me. I drove right home without the movie, uh, came in the door, Roxanne immediately realized there was something wrong and I, I spilled my guts in tears and told her how upsetting it was and, uh, and told her how I felt. I, I apologized to her, I felt so terrible. It's one of those moments that maybe all of us have had in some way or another. Maybe you've never done anything as bad as that. But uh, it was something that I carried with me for a while. I wondered if people had seen me. First, I thought maybe they wrote down the license plate number. Or later, I would think as I was driving to the mall, what if somebody in the parking lot recognizes me? And, uh, and they, they think then, hey, that's the guy that left his baby. I felt so terrible. Abram, in our story this morning, he, we know that he was 
a loving husband, that he thought his wife was gorgeous. He, the sun rose and set on her beauty. And so when he's got this plan to go to Egypt, he wonders if that's going to get him into trouble. He thinks that I think she's beautiful. Everybody's going to think she's beautiful. And uh, this could cause real problems if they think that they might want to kill me to get to her. And so he comes up with a plan and it's not a great plan. His plan is to protect himself. Perhaps he's thinking that uh, if something was to happen to me, if somebody killed me to get to Sarai, then she would, her safety would be compromised. Whatever thoughts it was went through his head about how dangerous the situation was and what might happen if he said what he said. It, it never occurred to him that he might put her more in harm's way by doing it, I'm convinced. He loved her. He thought she was beautiful. He did what he did to try to protect them, to try to come up with a plan. And, uh, and I can just imagine that moment when Pharaoh sends for her and he realizes that his plan has gone horribly wrong, that he was trying to do the right thing. He was trying to be a good man. He was trying to protect he and his family. That's all he was trying to do. And yet now his wife is in harm's way. She's been taken from him. He doesn't know if he'll ever see her again. And I can imagine the thought process that goes through his head. We all know what it is to be in dangerous situations and have to make a plan and not, sure, not be sure sometimes the right choice to make. And so Abram makes this choice. He comes up with his plan and he tries to protect himself by passing his wife off as his sister. And he figures they'll be safe and maybe people will even be nice to him to gain favor. And now she's in the clutches of the Pharaoh and he has no way to get to her. He has no way to bring her back home. He has no way to know exactly how she's being treated. It had all gone wrong. And in those moments, we often go back and and think through what we did and, and the decisions we made and say, could we have done something better? What if we had only known what was going to happen? Could we have made a better choice? How could we know? And so Abram is, is racking his brain and, and he doesn't know what's going to go, what's going to happen next. He knows everything's gone wrong and he, he wishes he'd made an, a, another choice, no doubt. What had happened? How had this gotten so far off track? And I wonder if Abram's mind didn't go back to that moment when God made him a promise. When God had called Abram, he had said to him, go to the land I'll show you. I'm not even going to tell you where you're going, but if you follow me, I will bless you and I'll make you a blessing to all nations. He had said, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who treat you with contempt. God had promised that in this situation where he was feeling the danger of maybe people uh, would try to destroy him to get at his wife, that they would be treating him with contempt and God had promised he would curse people who did that. That God would have his back. And yet now, even though Abram had started with such trust in God, that God would lead him and God would look after him, he gets into this situation where danger looms and he senses danger and he makes his own plan. And he sets things up his own way. And he decides that he is the one who needs to protect he and Sarai. And the very thing he does to try to protect them is the thing that leads to the most danger. Basically, God has pr promised him something and he has taken things into his own hands. He's found it hard in this moment to trust. And the truth is, if we all look at our lives and the things we've done, sometimes we do terrible things and we are not as bad as our worst moment and we are not as good as our best moment. In his best moment, Abram had decided he would follow God, that he would go where God led him, that he would listen to the voice of God and risk everything. 
But now in this moment, he had made a different choice. And he had forgotten to trust God. And he had made a plan for his own safety. And he had not been quite so courageous. And he had led to quite a bit of trouble. So why did God lead him? And now Abram decides that he has to look after himself. Why sometimes do we as human beings take our plans back into our own hands and, and try to make our own plan and then ask God to bless that rather than to count on his blessing and his promises, rather than to count on the fact that we can trust his plan and his guidance and his direction for us. Sometimes with the best of intentions, we can head off in a direction and make it for ourselves and make our own decisions and then hope that God will be with us along the journey we make down the path that he has not led us down and he has not pointed out for us. And so Abram had made this choice and we make those kind of choices. And it's not too late when that happens. The thing is that even when we are faithless, even when we lose heart, even when we decide that we need to do something and we make wrong choices, willingly, absent-mindedly, carelessly, or even without any knowledge of what would happen next. When we do those things and we make those choices and we have not known the right path to take because we have not listened for the voice of God leading us, even then, God is our God and his promises still hold. And so God makes this situation work out. He curses Pharaoh while Sarah is in his home and, and creates a situation in which Pharaoh realizes this is wrong. This never should have happened. And I don't want this lady in my home anymore. And he gives her back to Abram and he sends Abram on his way and he holds her in his arms again. And he takes her back into safety with him again. And he realizes how narrowly he missed a terrible, terrible tragedy. And the truth is, the sooner we come to our senses, the sooner that we trust that God has our best interest at, at heart. In the New Testament, it tells us that all things work together for good to them that love God. That's a scripture that I've had to rely on. That's a scripture that many of you have heard me tell the story of being in my car accident and, and all of the physiotherapy I went through and all the setbacks and all the, the surgeries and the infection and the the four hip replacements that I've had since I began this journey. And with every setback I, I experienced, with every time that I pushed and I worked so hard and I'd accomplished something and feel like it was getting better and then be set back, I had to reevaluate and wonder what was going on and what was going to happen and was I going to end up in a wheelchair for the rest of my life. And every time I was pushed back to that scripture, all things work together for good to them that love God. And I was afraid of my circumstances. I was afraid of what was going to happen to me. I was afraid of what life would look like if I didn't get to walk again. But I would have to ask myself, well, if I really believe that, that all things work together for good to them that love God. And when I answered, yeah, I, I really believe it, the next question naturally was, well, do you still love God? Of course I still love God. Of course I love him with all my heart after everything he's done for me. Well, if you love God and you believe that truth, you can know that everything will work together for good. And I had no idea what that would look like. I did not, I was not guaranteed that that would not mean that I would lose the ability to walk or things would not go down a dark path. But I knew that God would be with me and that he would lead me. And if even that happened, it would be for my good and the good of the world. And so I, I thank him for his presence and I thank him for his promises. And I believe and I trust in those promises. And every time that I've worked up the courage to be able to do that, it has worked out for me. And things have always, always made me glad that I made that decision. That's the decision that Abram was faced with. And after that, I wonder if he didn't think about things differently. 
and look at that promise differently and try to keep it on the, on the tip of his brain every day to say, listen, I really need to trust God and I really need to seek him and I want to go where he's leading me. I don't want to be anywhere else and I don't want to come up with any other plan than to follow God and to obey him supremely and to go down the path that he's laid before my feet. And that's the challenge that Abram's story gives to us. There are moments in our past that we can look back on, that we are ashamed of the choices we made. And sometimes looking forward, we have choices facing us and and they're hard choices. And we're trying to do the best that we can and, and we're trying to come up with a plan. And sometimes we just need to be reminded that God is trustworthy and that he has a plan and that he hasn't just left us to flounder so that we focus on him and we listen for his voice and we pay attention to what might be the leading of his spirit so that we can go where he tells us and do what he has planned for us so that we will experience the goodness that he has laid out before us for us to walk into. We might have other plans and we might have other ideas about what is truly good and what will be the best for us. But his plan is always, always better. Let's pray together. God, this morning, as we've looked at the story of Abraham over the last uh, couple of times together, we know that he was a man of faith at times and really trusted you. And then in this story this morning, he lost that and focused on what he could do himself. And he came up with his own plan and it went so terribly awry. And we confess, Father, that sometimes we have plans and sometimes we set out to do what we think is best. Sometimes we have not taken the time to pay attention for your voice and to trust that every promise you've given us is absolute and that you will show up and that you will act in our lives. Forgive us for the times when we have taken our future back into our own hands and tried to go down the path that we've laid before us and to ask you to bless that and to talk to you about about how you might help us to do what we want to do rather than to allow you to do what you want to do in us and through us and take us where you want to lead us. And so we ask you this morning for the faith in those moments when things get dicey and we feel most vulnerable and most at risk, that we would trust you with our entire future and put everything we have in the hands of the God who has promised to guide us and to protect us and to be with us and to do good to us all the days of our lives. Amen.